Do you realize what you've done, sis? It's only natural people look at you coldly since you both betrayed me. You're ready for that, aren't you? In response to my anger, my sister mocked me with her words. Ready? Concerned about others' gaze? If you worry about that, you can't live. As long as we're happy, nothing else matters. You'll keep losing out on happiness like this time if you keep worrying about what people think. In their argument, my husband was smirking and on my sister's side. However, I had executed an outrageous revenge plan on these two, so today I'm going to talk about that. I'm a 28-year-old office worker. My husband, who I married last year, is two years older than me at 30. Let me talk a little about my background. When I was little, my parents divorced and my sister and I were taken by our mother, who raised us single-handedly. We've been meeting my father once a month, even after our parents' divorce. I don't know what my mother thought, but I loved my father. My mother was always strong and mannish. She was always positive like the son to us. However, she passed away due to illness when I was in second grade in high school. My sister is three years older than me. She was very cute and popular since childhood, even when we were walking together as kids. You are as cute as a doll. Are you sisters? You don't look much alike. People I didn't know often spoke to her. I was tired of hearing insensitive lines from people who didn't realize they were hurting me. Even as a child, I was hurt. Compared to my sister, I wasn't. I was far from being called a doll, and not once was I ever told I was cute by strangers. Throughout my school days, my sister was always popular. Compared to her, I was treated as a wallflower. Still, I was proud of and loved my beautiful sister. I love my sister, but there was one thing I didn't like about her. She always wanted my things. She would take my clothes and things as if they were hers and bring them to her room. It didn't stop at just things. For some reason, she would exchange contact information with my friends, and if it was just becoming friends with them, that would be fine. But she has always stolen my friends away from me. All my ex-boyfriends were eventually taken by her. I was slow to realize this, but after the third time, I stopped introducing them to her. I dated my husband in secret from my sister until our marriage was decided. During our relationship, my sister- You have a boyfriend, don't you? I can tell. Introduce him to me. We're sisters after all, she said. I've decided not to introduce my boyfriend to you because you always take them away from me. I'll introduce him once we've decided to get married. Then, she said, Oh, don't you have confidence? It's your fault for being taken from, isn't it? Because you don't improve yourself that you're being taken from. It's your own doing. Don't blame everything on me. She laughed it off. That attitude made me so angry and I swear I will never introduce him to her again. After about a year and a half of dating him, happiness suddenly came. He proposed to me in a fancy restaurant, something I had dreamed of. Of course I decided to marry him. Once the decision to marry was made, we had to greet both families. I could no longer avoid introducing him to my sister. On the day I introduced him to my sister and father, as expected, my sister appeared in a dress as if she were attending a wedding. My father also seemed a bit nervous. Dad, sister, I've decided to marry him. As I introduced my husband, as expected, my sister's eyes were shining. Wow, he's handsome. What do you do for a living? She always uses her usual cooing voice. His family owns a food-related business. As an only child, he is promised to be the next president. When my sister found out, she became even more excited. What do you like about my sister? I'm good at cooking, and I used to do most of the chores after her mother passed away. She's not good at cleaning, and I always had to clean up after her. Oops, did I say too much? I'm sorry. This was within my expectation. Whenever I introduce the boyfriend, my sister never stops making comments that lower my impression. In the first place, I don't dislike cleaning, but I was busy with work, and it had become a routine for me to do a reset cleaning on weekends. I thought he would refute her, but... I'm surprised your sister is so beautiful. I thought she was an actress, so you're good at housework. Why don't we live with the three of us together? He was joking with a gleam in his eye. Maybe she was pleased by his remark as my sister then said, We're going to become family, so it seems like we should exchange contact information. Here's my number, so message me. Despite being a freeloader who can hardly keep a job, she handed her homemade business card to my husband. It's pathetic. At this moment, I felt my mood drop a bit. I wanted to argue. Her story about our chores was completely wrong. My sister had OCD. Since she has too much free time, she cleans multiple times a day to an abnormal extent. She's also obsessive about cooking additive, free meals, despite not having much money due to her high pride. 
The meal she makes are mostly steamed vegetables under the guise of tasting the ingredients. While it may be healthy, it's debatable whether it can be called cooking since all she does is microwave it. Since I started working, I've been preparing and eating my own meals. My father is seeing my sister eagerly jumping at the opportunity. Stop taking your sister's things and find something for yourself. It's shameful to always be reaching for other people's things. You're not that young anymore, so get married while you still can. He said half-jokingly. My sister with her face turning red got upset. I won't be lectured by a divorced man. This is upsetting. I'm leaving. She stormed out. My father said, Don't worry about your sister. I'll take care of it. Please make her happy. I've caused her a lot of trouble. Please take good care of my daughter. He bowed his head to him. My husband also. Leave it to me. I will definitely make her happy. I look forward to our future together. He bowed his head, and as if the previous incident never happened, the happy time continued. Then we greeted his parents. Nice to meet you. We have decided to get engaged. I hope for your guidance in the future. Thank you. When I said that, Oh dear, you seem nervous. No need to be. You're such a beautiful bride. I'm so happy. It's like I suddenly gained a daughter. My mother-in-law welcomed me warmly. My father-in-law also. We're a small company, but we'd like our son's wife to work with us. We're not forcing you, but could you consider it? I had heard this proposal from him beforehand. I'm currently working in an office, so it's my area of expertise. Yes, he told me about that. Of course, if there's something I can do, I would love to give it my best shot. I look forward to working with you, both professionally and personally. When I said that, my mother-in-law, Oh, I'm so happy we've been winging it with the office work, so having you here will be a great help. Likewise, we look forward to working with you in all respects, she told me. At this time, I was completely enamored with the dreamy idea of marriage. Because I don't have a mother and I don't get along with my sister well, we decided not to have a wedding ceremony. Of course, we barely had enough money for the wedding. After registering at the city hall, the two of us officially became a married couple. With marriage, I started working at my father-in-law's company, so I resigned from my previous job. I was supposed to have a happy daily life. However, after starting to live with my husband, something began to bother me. It's his tendency to take day off from work at the drop of a hat. He's completely spoiled because his parents run the company. His parents are so used to it that they don't say anything even when he takes a day off. Then one day, when my husband skipped work, an incident happened. On this day, I forgot my smartphone at home and went back to get it during my lunch break. There were pumps in the foyer. My heart wasn't just flowering, it was pounding painfully. Moreover, those pumps were the ones my sister had taken from me before. I understood the situation instantly. I decided to go outside and pretend I hadn't seen anything. My husband acted as if nothing had happened that night. I have absolutely no trust in him anymore. My sister, as usual, insists she's popular, oblivious to the fact that she's just being played by her numerous lovers. Wanting to know more about my husband and my sister, I hired a private investigator. A month later, the investigation results blew me away. My sister had been involved with seven men in a month except for my husband. Furthermore, all of them were married. My sister has never worked a full-time job in her life. Even if she does work, it's part-time and she can't seem to stick with it, perhaps due to her high pride. If she gets reprimanded, she won't go to work the next day. When she was younger, she had multiple sugar daddies. She used to mock me for working and earning money, confidently stating, As long as a woman is cute, she can survive. Perhaps she felt the limitations on relying on sugar daddies as she aged. Yet unable to stand on her own, my sister yearned for a wealthy husband and fell into the trap of easy matching apps. She would catch a rich man and start dating. However, all of her partners were married. She was merely a plaything for them. Oblivious to this reality, my sister probably thought she was popular at the time. As a result, my sister was having an affair with eight men, including my husband. The thought of sharing the same year as such a husband disgusts me. I brought up divorce. My husband. Huh? Do you want a divorce? If you're okay with it, then it's fine by me. I'll give you a divorce, but since you're the one bringing it up, there's no consolation money or anything, okay? As expected, he brazenly agreed without hesitation. I then said, You've been having an affair with my sister, haven't you? I know about it. How could you do something like that, having an affair with your wife's sister? He then responded, Oh, well that makes things easy. I'm going to divorce you and remarry your sister. My parents know about it too, so it'll be quick. I'll get your sister over here right away to be a witness for the divorce papers. He called my sister and she arrived in just a few minutes. Seeing my sister only made me angrier and I said, 
Do you understand what you've done, sister? You both betrayed me, so of course people are going to look at you coldly. You're prepared for that, right? My sister trying to assert dominance and mocking me responded, Prepared? Worried about people's gaze? If I cared about such things, I couldn't live. If we're happy, who cares about anyone else? If you keep worrying about what others think, you'll let happiness slip away just like this time. I'm also going to cut ties with you while I'm at it. I've taken your place as the president's wife. In a way, I was relieved. The sister I loved so much in my childhood is no longer here. If our relationship is going to be severed, I'd gladly severe it. The divorce was finalized without a hitch. They even readily signed divorce papers. I then said, I don't need consolation money. In exchange, please never show up in front of me again. Then my husband replied, Wow, you're a lifesaver. This is a peaceful divorce, huh? He said, grinning. We were renting the place where we lived, so there were no assets to divide, and we hardly had any savings to begin with. The meager savings we had ended up being given to me as moving expenses. Then my in-laws made their appearance. In fact, I had told my in-laws everything before this discussion. While surprised, my mother-in-law said, I love you dearly and I want you to be happy no matter what. You're not thinking of quitting your job, are you? If you're uncomfortable staying there, I understand, but I'm going to support you with everything I've got, so please reconsider that. Then my father-in-law said, Our son is good at nothing, so me stepping down as president is still a long way off. Your work ethic is something our company needs. He said, They arrived a bit earlier than the time we had arranged, unable to stand the suspense. My father-in-law said, I have had enough of you. You can't even do your job properly, and you have the gall to have an affair while skipping work? Pathetic. Then my husband responded, No matter what you say, I'm the only child, so I'm the next president. By the time it's my turn, it'll be the era of AI, so it's pointless to learn anything now. Everything will be done by AI. He mocked. My mother-in-law also angrily said, You don't even work, so don't you dare talk so arrogantly. You don't need to show your face here for a while. Come back when you've reflected on your actions. Then my sister said, Lucky us, we get an official break. We'll go on our honeymoon. She was ecstatic. The situation was getting out of hand. I decided to stay at my in-law's house until I found a place to live. The next day, I filed the divorce papers. Finally, I was single again. And this is where my plan came into play. At the same time I submitted the divorce papers, I sent a certified letter to my sister's extra-marital partners. When my sister was hit with demands for compensation from the wives of her seven lovers, she pleaded with my husband. Here's the condition for our marriage. Pay this compensation. As the future president, you can easily get this much money from the company. Pleading. However, my ex-husband doesn't work, so there's no way he has any money. There's also no way he could take money from the company. He finally got his senses back and was furious to find out that she had relationships with seven men besides him. What he faced was a massive demand for compensation from the extramarital partners. Their future was pitch black. They had a big fight apparently, but that was not the end of my ex-husband's misfortune. A few days after I reported the divorce and my sister's affair to my father, we were having a meal together because he was worried about my health. When I casually mentioned my in-law's company to my father, he said, The president of that client company is my old friend. What a small world. We still go out drinking together frequently. When I divorced, he was the one I consulted the most. He even performed a special act as my friend at the wedding ceremony with your mother. The relationship with the president of the client company was revealed. My father, who was angry about this incident, had also told his old friend about the divorce. He was furious at how irresponsible my ex-husband was. Once that became clear, my father contacted his old friend. He was drinking nearby and arrived immediately. It was the president whom I met several times at work. It's truly a small world. I can't forgive the guy who hurt your beloved daughter. I'll take action immediately. Don't worry. Nobody but him will suffer. With that, the conversation was quickly wrapped up and the topic shifted to the childhood stories of my father and the president. The next day when I went to work, my father-in-law seemed a little frantic. I was told by the client's company that a company can't do business with another company where the son is the president. On top of that, their affiliated companies have also proposed to stop dealing with us. My father-in-law said. My mother-in-law said. Well, it's only natural when they hear about a divorce like this. Trust is the most important thing for a company like ours. When I tried to contact the client's company, it's okay, it's okay. This is not your fault at all. It's a consequence of their own actions. That lazy son who doesn't work anyway. It's only natural for the company to let him go. We have spoiled him too much. 
He's always been absent without notice or just lacks off, even when he does come to work. On top of that, he suggests that jobs that require manual work can be done by AI. He's no longer needed in our company. If we leave it to him, the company will go bankrupt. With that, my father-in-law chimed in. You're right. If he takes over, the company will just go bankrupt. I have a proposal, though it's a bit earlier than planned. Can I tell her, dear? When he asked her, This is the best timing. Go ahead, dear. Then my father-in-law said, This is something we had discussed before the divorce, but our son is embarrassingly useless. He's a burden to the company, so we want you to learn various jobs over the years as the future president. This proposal is not about blood ties, but for the sake of protecting our important company. We hope you'll accept. I was taken aback. I have no confidence, but I love my parents-in-law. I want to help them, so I immediately replied, I will do whatever I can. I would like to be helped to you both. Please let me continue to work hard in this company. And I want to become someone who can protect the company over the years. Thank you in advance. Upon hearing this, both of them were overjoyed. Even though we're no longer a family in the traditional sense, I'm glad to have a deeper relationship with them. With that settled, my father-in-law called out to my ex-husband. Sensing an unusual atmosphere, my ex-husband appeared unusually quickly. I explained the circumstances. My ex-husband, who has been lounging about being the next president, started yelling at me when he found out that I was taking over his position. Playing the victim, are you? Ugly women like you need to have a good personality to survive. You're taking over my company. I have no intention of giving in. Before I could retort, my father-in-law stepped in. How dare you talk to the next president like that? You're nothing but a ghost employee who doesn't even work properly. We don't need such employees in our company anymore. You're fired. At that statement, What the hell? I don't want a sinking ship of a company like this. I quit. Give me a severance pay of $7,000. He was talking nonsense. It felt like talking to a child who was completely off the mark. My mother-in-law couldn't help but laugh. There's no way we have severance pay for you. If you start talking about that, you'll have to compensate for all the losses the company has suffered because of your mistakes. You can't do that, can you? Then step back quietly. At that, he frowned and said, Shut up. I'll never have anything to do with you again. Even if you come begging in your old age, I'll kick you away. He spat out words that you wouldn't think to say to your parents. My father-in-law responded, Huh, no matter how much trouble we're in, we're never going to beg you. Sorry, but our company is doing better than you think. We're not even slightly considering relying on you in our old age. Then he retorted, I'm cutting all ties with you. And he stormed out. We all looked at each other and couldn't stop laughing. My mother-in-law also said, I'm glad we got rid of him. Knowing him, he'll probably come crying for help when he's in trouble. But we won't help him anymore. It's not good for him. My father-in-law, Indeed, well, I'm grateful that you found us a good next president also said. It is, as my ex-husband said, a peaceful divorce. From what I heard afterward, it seemed he has broken up with my sister. They probably woke up to a huge amount of alimony. I saw my ex-husband working part-time at a convenience store in the neighborhood once. I was relieved to see him working earnestly, but I only saw him once. He probably couldn't keep it up and quit. As for me, I'm working hard in sales with the president. I love my in-laws who treat me like their real daughter. The company is increasing its clients and hiring more employees to keep it running. I enjoy my work so much. My love luck is at its worst, but my interpersonal luck is at its best. A wonderful in-law family and enjoyable work. My days are now fulfilling. I have good ties with my flawed sister, so there's no trouble at all. Looking back now, I'm grateful for the connection my ex-husband made for me.